All right, everybody, welcome to our general mentorship. Today is Monday, April the 3rd, 2023. And I think we'll have a great session today as people get logged in. Uh, feel free to turn on your cameras if you are not driving. If you are driving, please stay in listen only mode. Uh, we really care about you and want to make sure that you don't have any accidents out there. Uh, just a little announcement to start off the session. Uh, this is for everybody here and then everybody watching the replay as well. Um, as you know, uh, outside of running Notary Stars and doing the general mentorship, I also own a signing agency. Uh, we've been working on a merger um, coming up. Uh, and that goes live starting at the end of this week. And I'm just going to rattle off the cities. Now, if you hear a Texas city in there, just know that that's going to be probably about another month out. Uh, but I'm going to rattle off these cities really quick. If you are in those areas, Unlimited Inc. will use you. If you are a notary to pro or if you're a notary star, and preference will always go to those who have taken both. So quickly down that list, Albuquerque, Asheville, Atlanta, Birmingham, Boise, Boston, Charlotte, Charleston, Chattanooga, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Corpus Christi, Colorado Springs, Columbia, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Detroit, Greensboro, Winston, Greenville, Houston, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Kansas City, Colleen, Knoxville, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, Northern Colorado, uh, Oklahoma City, Orlando, Phoenix, of course, uh, Portland, Prescott, uh, those are some of that we already are working in, Raleigh, Durham, Reno, Richmond, Riverside, uh, Sacramento, St. Louis, Salt Lake City, San Antonio, San Diego, San Francisco, Southwest Florida, Tampa, Tucson, and Washington, D.C. So if you are in those areas, uh, you will probably see an uptick in files from us for sure. Uh, those of you that are in the Florida markets, definitely it's going to have to be on point. Uh, those are, you know, sign, scan, and ship fundings. Um, so just letting you know that if you are, you know, um, in those areas, business is coming. Speaking of business, uh, I do want to let you guys know right here at the top of the hour. Uh, and by the way, if you brought questions, go ahead and get those hands raised because as soon as I'm done, I'd love to start answering your questions that you bring in. Uh, but speaking of the industry itself, uh, I mentioned this the last couple of mentorships, but I do want to let you know that, you know, Unlimited Inc. has seen the market coming back slowly. Uh, March was really well for us. Uh, it was actually impressive for both myself and my business partner, Travis. Uh, we were kind of shocked at the numbers at the end of the month. Looking back at what we did, it went steady crawl from January, February, and March. Um, so you guys, and I've talked to several notaries throughout the country that have said, hey, it is getting busier again. It's getting busier again. I do predict that we'll be really back to normal by the end of the year, definitely first of next year. And here's the great news. We're on the uphill climb now. We're not in the downhill climb, right? So if you were scared before, don't worry about it. It's coming back and it's going to come back. It's going to be better every month. Now, historically, right before summer, we might take a little dip. And then right before the winter, we might take a little dip. Don't let those months scare you. Uh, those are just historically normal. But March is always bigger. Then it takes a little dip and then it climbs. And then it takes a little dip and then it climbs. So big, the beginning of a quarter kind of uh, starts off a little bit slower. Um, so just want to make sure you're uh, aware of that. Um, today, I have a micro topic for you, but I also want to tell you, um, and this is just strange, you know, uh, turn of events or, you know, uh, a strange omen, so to speak. So William Bumphrey posted an article and it was in our email that went out this morning and I'll attach it to the bottom of this email as well. But if you go on Notary Stars blogs, I'm going to look it up and tell you the exact title and I'll actually put it in the chat for those of you that are here with us today as well. I want to tell you, um, you know, you guys know that I work on SEO for the websites. I know some of my marketing students are here and they know what exactly what I'm capable of uh, when it comes to building landing pages and showing people how to get found. Well, William Bumphrey actually wrote an article called 10 Unique Industries to Target for Remote Online Notary Business. Well, I had been working on some landing pages. My marketing students know that and I've showed them. Strangely, on Friday, we got a call. Uh, from one of the sectors in that article that Bill wrote about, and it's going to turn into 50 to 100 RON signings uh, for contracts every single month for Unlimited Inc. Um, that's also exciting if you work with us and you are one of our RON notaries. Uh, I did have that conversation today. Uh, we'll be firming things up in the next month, but I want to let you guys know if you're a RON notary, you are not bound to 
a uh, specific sector. This company reached out, they are on the East Coast. They found one of our landing pages that I teach my marketing students how to build. They reached out, they wanted to know what we were capable of. Could we handle 50 to 100 transactions? That could literally be one of your clients. They wanted to know, hey, could you give us a good pricing for volume? We talked about what goes into it. We had a great conversation today, really nice company. Uh, and they're not title and escrow. They are in the fiduciary uh, areas. They do loans for small businesses, uh, but this is more of a contract type uh, type work where it's it's it has. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not going to give too much away on the the meeting over the thing. So I'm trying to be careful with my words here. But um, it has to do with contracts and you know financials, but it's not title and escrow uh, lending type thing. And the signings are going to be around five pages. So that's, uh, you know, a big deal. Just imagine if you had a guarantee of 50 to 100 files a month, and they really want to do them during business hours. So I want to say this not as bragging, but to give you hope, and especially for those of you who are looking for additional business, that there is, you know, business out there. And specifically with Ron, there is a market for you, and you're not just bound to your local area. So um, that came by way of a landing page that I built specifically for Ron on our website. If you are a Ron notary, you really are gonna have to have a website. And if you don't know how to build one or how to build landing pages, please come over to the Notary Star Plus marketing level. I will get you set up and make sure that you know how to do all of those things. Um, and then now I wanna talk about the micro topic. I already see some hands going up again, just a reminder. As soon as I'm done with this micro topic, I want you to have those hands raised so we can answer as many questions across the country as we possibly can and help you out. Um, I want to mention this about general notary work, and um, you, some of you may know why I'm mentioning it, and we're just going to leave it at that. Um, I know all of a lot of you want general notary work, and a lot of you are filling in your calendars right now with general notary work. And for those of you who are not, um, you really should. A lot of my great clients that have been with me a long time came from doing just one small assignment for them. For instance, I'll, I'll name just a few for you. Uh, once I did some adoption papers and I changed the notarial certificates for um, for the, 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 the signers, I said, listen, these are not the actual notarial certificates that you need. This is what you need. Um, let me print them out because it wasn't Arizona language and they had to go to court in the morning and they were doing this whole you know adoption and donor and situation and i set them up with their paperwork well little did i know that the 30 dollars that i charged them he was actually one of the top realtors in arizona um and he said listen i'm gonna make my escrow officers use you and and this company because i believe in you and this wouldn't have been right for the morning and it was a big deal to them and so those little assignments can turn in another example is uh you know, for those of you in Arizona that know um, my company, we have an attorney that uses us that we go out to um, we go out to take in all the paperwork for a personal injury attorney that came from a twenty five dollar notary appointment that I did at 1030 at night that I really didn't want to do. But I went and I gave them my best face forward and then they use us and they put in at least a couple of grand of business. Now, that doesn't go to me anymore. That is parsed out to the notaries. But that turned into a really great client that got me to where I'm at today and still puts money in the pocket for all of the Arizona notaries. And that came from just doing a general notary appointment. So there is a reason to do general notary appointments. A lot of clients wound up that way for me. Now, the reason that I bring that up is because I know some of you have your Google My Business set up and some of you don't. And I want to let you know that and I'm going to our YouTube channel if you haven't visited our YouTube channel yet, I'd really encourage you to go there and then also subscribe while you're there on our YouTube channel. Find that subscribe button. And a couple of things that I'm going to run down with you on this YouTube channel um, is, first of all, we have our onboarding that shows you everything that we offer at Notary Stars, but we also offer free general notary work training. Ms. Beth did a really great job last year of setting us up with all of the general notary work training that we need. Now, our members have access to that too, but it is free and public because we want every notary in the country to have basic notary training when it comes to general notary work. 
We do have some starter training there for buyer's files and refinance files. That's not going to get you through what our notary stars and notary pro graduates really know and what they can do, but that is there. All of our training courses on leash are there, customer service, but right here under the marketing section, um, I recently did a Yelp help where I talk you through the entire um, setup of setting up your Yelp business and how to maximize it. I did a free Google My Business setup and how to set up everything on it. And then also, if your Google My Business for any reason gets suspended, uh, you will have a remedy there for you. That's free and on the public pacing channel. You don't have to be a member of Notary Stars at all. I just want to make sure that you're aware of that because I know a lot of people are vying for general notary work and trying to get set up. I do keep a lot of the extra things like Facebook, Instagram, building a website into the marketing class, so I can't release too much on there. But those things are there and they're free. So, you know, when you're making your choices out there of what your next move is on how to set up your notary business for general notary work, please stop by and look at those free videos. The page goes on with community tips, burning questions, notary hacks. They're all easily laid out for you to find on your phone. And all you have to do is click subscribe on that YouTube channel and it will make sure that you're notified when we post a new video and where that new video is located. So I just wanted to bring that up to you about general notary work today because I know there are so many people out there that um, you know, are trying to set up that Google My Business and the Yelp and they don't really know how and it's really done for you right there in that video. All you have to do is watch it and help yourself set it up. Now I'm going to go to questions now. Uh, we'll start out with Mr. Uh, Joel. Uh, if you don't mind coming off mute there and asking your question and anybody else who's got a question, please go ahead and raise that hand. We'll help you with anything we can. Mr. Joel. Let's see. There you go. You should be able to unmute now there. There we go. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I just, my, I have a simple question. Um, I'm going to start doing jail signings. Yeah. And I just wonder what I should charge for them. Uh, and then my second question, Ronnie, I didn't write down the email address that you told me to write you at. I sent it to the wrong address. They were going to forward it to you. I don't know if they did. So, I did get it. Um, I got it this morning on Monday, so okay. I will be reaching okay. out to you very soon. Okay. So uh, I think, you know, what I really need right now, since I've been doing everything wrong uh, for a long time, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm finally getting real with myself and, um, uh, and, that, and that's good. It needed to happen. But um, I thought this might be a good way to generate some now income. Uh, in my little rural community here. So I just, I don't know, is that uh, typically like a $30 thing where? Well, let's think this through. Um, you know, first of all, you have to go by what your state can allow you to charge, you know, 10 we, bucks. 10 bucks. And then if you have any mileage or anything like that, uh, that you get are allotted. With jail signings, I typically add a, uh, a time because you're going to learn that when you go to the jail, sometimes you're going to have to wait up to an hour for them to bring the inmate up to you. Um, and then you're, you're going to have cancellation policies that you need to think about as well. So what if you get there that day and they can't bring the inmate up? You need to read through. You can go to Unlimited Ink Notary's website, look at our jail notary page, kind of look at our terms and conditions. Um, you'll need to have some sort of cancellation policy in place and whatever you think is fair, you know, for me, if I'm going to spend an hour of time waiting at the jail, you know, I, I would say $50 is, you know, a fair price plus the cost of the notarization. But also you have to, a lot of times in your area, um, actually think about what can people afford. Um, when I was in Los Angeles, I charged a lot more because people in Los Angeles had a lot more money and would pay a lot more money. When I moved to Arizona, that price came down from about $150 to go to the jail to $75. So you also have to think about where you are and how much money that, you know, the people in your area actually can afford. And then you land on a price that would really, you know, be worth your time. So the inmate pays for it? 
No, they, well, I mean, uh, it depends on who the inmate is. I mean, they're not going to pay for it from the jail because they're not going to have any money on them. Um, okay. Usually it's a family member that's paying for it. Okay. So they have the family member there at the, uh, at the signing. Uh, generally, you're the only one allowed to go in uh, with the inmate. There may be a guard there uh, with you, but there's not the family. They're not going to let the family and you go into the same room. It's going to be you and the inmate. Yeah, okay. and Joel, it's typically one of the family members or a friend that you get the call from. So it's not going to be directly from the inmate anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so so then the family member or the interested person is going to do a search for notaries and then select who they're going to use? Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I think that's wonderful, actually. Mm -hmm. And... So, uh, you know, Mr. Joel, I know you are in my my marketing class, um, so I just wanted to kind of show you because uh, this is, you know, this is something that you, you know, I, I think everybody should be aware of, you know, being able to build a landing page like this, you know, my marketing students are very well aware of this, but, you know, let's just take a little trip over to Google right now. These are things that you can't make up and this is not, you know, fabricated in any way you can go and test this, but if I just type in Phoenix Jail Notary on Google, of course, Google My Business is going to be the first three that come up, but we have Unlimited Ink, Unlimited Ink, Notary Stars, Notary Stars. This is also Unlimited Ink. You'll see that this is logo, logo Arizona Mobile Notaries. I pretty much have the rest of the first page of Google, you know, with built with a landing page. And I'm very proud of that. And I teach notaries how to do that as well in my marketing course. If you market yourself right, and let, let me just explain how Google works really quick, because I want to give you all hope that you can do this as well. What you know as well as I know, that when somebody needs a notary, they need it right now, okay? They don't need it yesterday, and notaries are notorious for being at a table or in a signing and not being able to pick up the phone. You all have missed phone calls from your Google My Business. It's like a Rolodex, here, 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 and boom. And the first thing they're going to say is Arizona inmate notary public services. That's, you know, a bigger appeal than even the Google My Business. Then they come and they land right on our page where it tells them everything they, that they need to know and they can book our services. So every notary out there, and I actually have students in my class that are coming up on the first page of Google now and now going to be my big, one of my competitors. They're actually in this meeting and I'm proud of them because all of you have the ability to go out there and build a landing page like that, that comes up on Google. You just have to know how to do it. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to, to get in there. Mr. Joel, did you have more questions along that same vein there? You're on mute, so we can't hear you. There we go. No, I, uh, I don't need to take any more time. Uh, so other people can ask their questions, but Thank you for that, and uh, we'll talk more about, you know, the uh, my web page and working yep. together a little more closely. So great, thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. And then our next question is coming up from the famous Dan Brewer. There, how are you doing today? Welcome over here. <laughs> how you doing there, Ronnie? Good. Good to see you. Hello, friends. Um, I don't want to make a pitch, but Notary Masters on Thursday, six uh, nine thirty a.m. Uh, so join us, notarymasters.org. Um, I have two questions, and they're not related. One well, before is, you go on from there, tell everybody what Notary Masters is. And it's then... a Toastmasters club, just mm -hmm. like every other Toastmasters club. But it's notaries. It's notaries doing the speeches. Our speakers this week are Judy Lawrence and uh, Phil Shannon. So we've got uh, some couple of big people in our industry that will be speaking. And it's a, it's a regular Toastmasters club. If you've ever been to one in your neighborhood, it's just like that, except these are all notaries and we all, we have some special stuff for notaries. We just had a great open house a few weeks ago and it was uh, pretty cool. So it doesn't cost anything to show up and do a, uh, and just kind of hang out. We do have a membership that we hope you will, will join. Uh, and so, uh, and it's very minimal. It's about a hundred dollars a year or, $50 for six months. So um, hoping people will come, at least come see what it's about. And we're going to be notarymasters.org. <clears throat> My first question, it's Thursday, every other Thursday, twice a month, Thursdays this week, and then uh, again on the, 
to be there, what, the 6th and 20th this month. Awesome. First question is about foreign language documents. Mm -hmm. And in Oregon and Washington, they have the same rule, which is we we do not recommend you doing documents in a language in which you are not familiar. Uh, they discourage it. I called the Secretary of State. I'd ask this to another group of people too. Uh, they do everything to tell you not to do it, but they one thing they don't do is tell you not to do it. Um, and I've always come up with, with the approach that if uh, I know that that's the person that's that's named in the document and I believe it's them, and I can add a certificate of their choosing if I want to. Uh, I'm right up here in in the in the the tech sector with with Intel and Nike within a mile each of uh, a, within a mile of each of them. We have a lot of nationals uh, working here, and every year they have to update their passports, and they have a ton of documents. Every one of those assignments is 100 to 200 bucks, and so I really want to keep these going. But everybody seems to be discouraging me to do it, and I certainly have confidence that I'm doing it right. So, what's your take on this? Well, I know Miss Beth is going to have something to say on this. So, Miss Beth, I'm going to get my words out and then you come right behind me because mine are going to be very short. Um, so I have the take on this. I would absolutely never notarize a document that is in another language, whether my state said I could or not, because I'm not able to truly understand if the signer knows what they're signing and they could just be saying anything. And I always think ahead of like, what what would a judge ask me? Now, somebody could come back and say, we're not responsible for the contents of the document, but I am responsible for saying, do you understand the document? And that means I would have had to have looked at it at some point and actually understood what that document is. So I don't want to put myself in a position. Now, it really, that comes down to a personal choice. If your state allows you to do that and you want to continue, that is a personal choice. Personally, I would not because I have too much to lose having unlimited ink and notary stars. So that could really hurt me a lot. Um, you know, it's it's a personal choice and I'll let Miss Beth take it away on that. Well, probably the only thing I have to add is um, it's not forbidden. It's only recommended that you don't. So you don't have a statute that would put your commission at risk. So that's one thing I want to point out. The other thing would be a translator. Are you authorized to use a translator in Oregon? Yeah. Okay. So you could do that. Um, have somebody that you can rely on, that you can call, that's actually a certified translator, not just somebody who knows the language that you can tag along with you. Um, but an actual translator, and that might be a little bit more comforting to you. No, I, I, I'm not uncomfortable as it is, but okay. Yeah. And again, I have a comment about that, if I could, please. Um, yes, absolutely. Well, in California, you know, in in the notary essentials and everything, it's it's straightforward as long as you can communicate with, okay, with that person and they can tell you they agree with the documents. Maybe they could give you a little description of what it means and you put it in your journal so if it comes back they did understand what was in the document i'm guessing that might could help um it does say in oregon i think um it does make reference to what you should note in your journal that the document was in a foreign language um i think you know if if you can communicate with your signer, Dan. That's the only thing that's in your statute. I mean, other than that right. recommendation. So, yep. communicate. Okay. My second question. And by the way, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Melissa. Um, my second question is about Ron, and it regards documents like, let's say, a last will or something like that that requires a witness. And I want to know how. If I've got if, if I've got Joe in Santa Cruz, California, and I've got um, Beth in Phoenix, Arizona as Joe's witness, and how I'm up here in Portland, how what is a Ron witnessing look like? Okay, that's uh, that's going to vary by platform. Um, the one great thing about 
Ron is that the witness doesn't have to be, you know, at their house. It could be, they could be located anywhere. These transactions that I told you about at the beginning of the video, uh, the platform Blue Notary and I think Cyberize it both have witnesses available for purchase so that you can just add it onto the price and they have witnesses on standby. Um, some of the platforms have that. You don't even have to have one on the, on the standby or you could team up with another notary that you're working with, which is a, a great way to do it and say, hey, I'm bringing in the business. Can you be one of my witnesses and have a little roster? Uh, of, of notaries. Okay, my question is, what does the witnessing look like? In Oregon, I call the Secretary of State on this, and they say it's line of sight, mm -hmm. which means if they're signing something uh, electronically, that means the witness is watching their hands on the keyboard, click on the button, and signing. So what does that look like? Okay, so that we have never run into at Unlimited Inc. And this will be something that I'll reach out to Amy at Cyberize it about. I did check to see if she was with us today. Um, she's not in this meeting at this moment, but that'll be a question that I would love to get an answer to. And Miss Beth, I know you're taking notes on this. Uh, if you can make sure this is part of our notes, we will get an answer to that question because the way that we have been doing it, uh, which is mostly out of the state of Florida at the moment, um, we want to be able to uh they actually just come on the video they don't watch their hands they they watch the transaction happening so if there is a state that requires that we will need to get even more knowledge from from somebody like amy at cyberize it that would have a 50 state knowledge on that what you're doing is you're you're seeing the dot the witness is seeing the document unsigned mm -hmm. and then they refresh and now they see it signed no the witness is on the screen with you and the, it, generally you have everybody on one side of the screen and then you have the documents and you're watching the signer lean in toward the keyboard but you don't actually see the keyboard okay all right you know what i'm asking though right i absolutely know what you're asking you want to know if that witness needs to be in the room to actually see those hands hit that keyboard my line of sight can be electronic meaning i can have facetime i can have my phone up here and they can be in in uh, phoenix and they can have be pointing to my fingers on here. And then, yeah, they did witness it. Uh, we can do it in a hospital. I have the, I have the witnesses down in the, in the lobby and they've got, we've got a, a video chat going on. And when I'm done, I go down to the lobby and they find the witness part. Mm -hmm. But I wanna know if there's not proximity what that looks like. So, all right, thanks, Ronnie. You guys no take problem. Care. And I'm actually gonna text Amy while we're in this meeting to see if we can get her in here. Um, and just I, and I apologize, some... but I need to leave my, uh, I'm, a, I'm a caregiver and I need uh, to do daddy stuff. Everybody oh, have a great oh, day. Come in. No problem. All right. Uh, we'll move on to the next uh, question uh, there. Ms. Crosby, you've been so patient. Good evening. It's Fisha. It's easier than it looks. <laughs> the story of my life. So, um, I missed the last uh, huddle we had, um, and the topic was talking about getting paid when mm -hmm. um, the signing companies are not paying us. Can you briefly tell me what the resolution to that is? Because I have two invoices that are outstanding from last year um, that when I'm looking up the actual company, I can see, well, one of the companies, he's, he frequently changes businesses, the name of his business and his phone number. Would you mind stating that on camera? Um, if you are uncomfortable, I can put it on pause. Just let me know either way, because I'd like to know if it's the same company that a lot of us have been having problems with. Let's see. Let me know if you need me to pause the video for just the people that are here. Oh, I have no shame because uh, when I do the work, I want to get paid. Pay close. And by the way, I'm pulling up that resolution for everybody here, and then it'll also be attached to the replay. I do want to get this into circulation for everyone. Um, so I'm going to pull up the blog and the uh, the video to to get you exactly how to handle that. But let me know when you got that name. Okay. Now, guys, we have an article uh, while we're waiting on that name. We have an article called Slow to Pay or No Pay Signing Agencies. We did a general mentorship two weeks ago, 
And I think it's worth going through and watching and, and at least the first 15 minutes of it so that you can understand exactly how to collect money from a non-paying signing agency. Um, this one is the Elite Etiquette Group. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, the, that's the first name or, uh, or they've had other names as well. I, they do have other names, um, but I didn't. I don't have them on my notes. I kind of like went into their um, state website for their business. Okay. Their um, email is their phone number. His phone number because it's a guy. That, that's okay. That that you can leave oh. it there, and and we got to be careful what we do on camera. Okay. Um, so you. I did post that article. Now, do you know what state they're located in? Um, whatever 916 is. Okay, uh, I'll do a, they can have a different number. So I have New York numbers for Unlimited Inc. And it's, it's Las Vegas. Okay. Because I have so the address. You need to find out exactly where there's companies located. Um, and in that article, it explain you exactly the process. But ultimately, what you want to do is file a complaint with the attorney general of that state. Um, that's going to be the biggest message you can send and keep them from continuing to open businesses. So we have a very similar situation with a company here in Arizona. Um, if you're watching, we're watching you now. Uh, <laughs> the I'm serious. Um, the, the You want to file a complaint with the Secretary of State. It's one thing if they're slow to pay, if they're not outside their payment contract terms, or if you know there's another company out there, uh, Mobile Notary Zone, that openly said, hey, I come, my, my biggest client went bankrupt. I haven't got paid, but I'm going to get you all paid. That's a different story. Now, if they're, mm -hmm. if they're outside of their payment terms and they're, you know, creating different names, you need to report this to your, that's that state's attorney general so that they will not be able to open future businesses. It may take more than one notary's complaint in order to do that. Mm -hmm. But what you're going to do is put a big red flag on them not being able to go down to their Secretary of State's business office and open a new business just for the sake of it. The problem in this industry, and not to go off on a tangent, and this is totally related, is that here's the thing. When a company opens a, a, a LLC, they get a EIN, which masks their social security number, which prevents you from going and going after them credit wise, because most credit reporting companies won't go after an LLC. It's funny how that works, right? But at Notary Stars, what we are doing is we are actually coming up with a method on how to unmask those and get those uh, reported to credit bureaus. So hopefully we'll be able to help you. As long as you guys have the owner's names, uh, there is a way for us to find out that information. And we are in the process of creating a way for you to file a report and us help you in that way and, and report them to the credit bureaus that can also prevent them from opening a business but filing with the that state's attorney general you can complain mm -hmm. about that business let them know what happened to you let them know how many times it happened to you let them know any research that you have you want to be concise and get it you know in a single letter um and you know dear attorney general i am concerned about this business they have you know done this to me this is damaging it's not good for our you know con constituents you want to get it in there and of course, maybe yours won't be the one that takes it down, but it'll definitely be the one that puts a big target. And I guarantee you when they start hearing from their attorney general's offices, that's when the, you know, things might change for them or they just might go away forever because that means notaries are getting smarter. Yeah, I actually, now that you were speaking about it, I pulled up this information off the BBB. So I went to the Better Business Bureau and I saw the complaint. And I found his address and then I saw it. I kind of like fell into a rabbit hole. And then I found all the other businesses and different addresses. Um, but yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I thought I had two, but I, I think it was from another file that I closed out. But this one stood out because I actually reached out to the title company. The loan was funded three days after I completed it. And I waited the 45 days and still nothing. And when I, when you call the number, it automatically says the voicemail is full. You know, the typical stuff that he's moving on, basically. Mm -hmm. No, that article that I posted in the chat, I'm going to post it one more time and I will post it on the replay as well. 
I really hope everybody will read that article, watch at least the first 20 minutes of the video because I started out with that information. You do have a voice. There is a way for you to you know, collect and send a message. Sometimes, you know, oh, by the way, there's a follow up article to that about how to write off bad debt because you can't actually write off bad debt in the, as a signing agent. So make I'll mm -hmm. post that tax article as well, just in case people think, oh, I can write that off. So the first article I posted was about that. And I'm glad that you brought it up um, because, you know, I, I want notaries to know that they have a voice and that you guys can actually, you know, make a stand. I'm hoping to be a part of making a, uh, you know, the, the first notary collection agency. Uh, we are partnering with oh, a, wow. a company uh, where you can go in and, you know, post a, uh, a complaint against a company. We'll do the research to find, to see if we can find them. Of course, if it goes through this third party debt collection company, um, you have to realize they're going to get a cut. Notary Stars is not taking a portion, but all debt collection companies, basically, if you turn it in collections, you say, I'm not going to try to collect. They're going to legally try to collect. And then they're, uh, if they collect, you'll get like 60 or 40%, whatever they have agreed to. We're still looking at those terms. Um, I'm putting that second article in there now. One thing I do want you guys to know, okay, that this is unfortunate, but as you're collecting, please make sure you read that article, but here's just a few tips of advice on the way out the door of this question, okay? Number one, you are only allowed to call them during business hours, and I would advise you to only email them during their posted business hours, okay? You are not allowed to um, yell at them or threaten them you're not allowed to do anything. There is a lot of laws in every state against how you can collect debt and excessive emails and excessive phone calls can work against you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you build your case against a company, and that's why a lot of people turn to debt collection is because they're only going to file the allotted amount of letters in that state. They're only going to send their a certain amount of demand from that state. They're not going to go overboard with it. And I know I talk to notaries all the time that say, I called them 30 times and they didn't answer the phone. I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. You can go to jail. Um, they can actually turn that around on you and it could cost you more trying to collect that debt than it can for uh, what you'll actually, um, what you'll actually ever collect on it. So just be careful with debt collection. Doesn't mean you can't do it. Just read that article that those two articles that I posted and make sure you follow the right way of doing it. And I know it's frustrating, but I just want to, you said it's Faisha, right? Faisha. Faisha. Faisha, you are not mm -hmm. alone. You're not the only one that's ever been through this. I have, thank you. I have pulled some strings and, and, and pushed myself to the limit on patience with people before. And I've, I've, I've strangely, I think I've only had one company in 10 years that didn't pay. Um, but I probably went outside of those lines of the law back in my early career that, and I didn't know things until someone sat me down and said, you can't do these things. Um, so I say this with love on being careful. I know, no, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth about how to do things. <laughs> you know, they want me to tell them, go. Well, I appreciate them. it. <laughs> but, I appreciate it. Cause it was, it was at one point it was like almost $600. I was trying to collect from different agents or agencies and then um as i started sending formal emails it was like an oversight or there was a delay in funding and they just didn't communicate and this one it just it's repeated no info no con you know no communication at all so thank you for answering my question i appreciate it thank you and um guys she did mention one thing that i want all loan signing agents to know and i i had this question come up recently and i i hope you know this especially those of you who are going for direct business every day at unlimited inc we are told a file is delayed in funding or it won't fund at all now we still pay that notary but we don't get paid i've had a re notary recently with a direct client that said well you still need to pay me they don't get paid either as a loan signing agent you need to understand when you're working direct especially if you have a client that's giving you 20 30 50 60 70 files a month sometimes you're going to have to eat it it's a part of doing business and i do it all the time at unlimited ink notary where we have to eat a cost 
for a client and we still pay the notary because they went out and did, we don't call them and go, well, they didn't fund. Can we do 50%? Travis and I just decided we're going to pay our notary. If they did, if they didn't do anything wrong and it wasn't on them for not funding, then we are going to pay them for their service. But that is a choice we made as a company. And we have a lot more wiggle room and uh, revenue that, to play with than you guys might have in your smaller businesses as you find your greatness and your footing in this industry. But I wanted to make that a point because you might have companies from time to time tell you it didn't fund. And a lot of the signing agencies may have a clause that say, if it doesn't fund, they can't pay you. So that goes back to reading your contracts and you have to be kind of understanding about it uh, when it comes to, to those things. I wish I could tell you differently. I make different choices with my company. They're gonna make their choices but we all have to kind of decide who we want to work with and how we want to work with them. Miss Susan, you are up next with questions and guys get those hands raised. Thanks. Um, I just had a question about, I've heard about the Durant or acknowledgement stamps as opposed to attaching a separate page. What are your thoughts on that? I'm going to let Miss Beth uh, answer this question um, because I think she is kind of the, the, the expert on this. Uh, I have my opinions, but Miss Beth, I want I want an expert opinion on this. Well, a couple of pros and cons come to mind right away. If you've got to have enough room on the document to be able to use the stamp, sometimes that's not an option. You still have to attach. Uh, the other thing is those stamps are huge, Susan. <laughs> so you're going to have to carry your... Um, all your notary tools on wheels in order to get a stamp that size into your bag. Probably, probably about that size, right? Wow. Maybe a little bit shorter. It's going to be huge. So they're a big convenience um, if you need them. Um, loose certificates are probably a better way to go if we're talking general notary work. If we're talking a recordable document and there's room on the page. We have a... Uh... Um, we have Miss Lugo there uh, holding up one. Can I spotlight you so everybody can see that while you're talking, Miss Beth? Yeah. So yeah. that's the size of it there. <laughs> so you'd have one for acknowledgement, one for giraffe. And then, of course, if you had requirements in your state for capacity, how big is your bag? Wow. <laughs> okay. That's not terrible. Mine's well, that big. stamp was the same size as your head. <laughs> Just about. So yeah, if you can lug them around um, and you can, and you have enough room on the document, it's a big convenience. Yeah. And okay. then it's perfectly legal. Then Miss yeah. Denisa has hers held up there as well. Uh, they look pretty large. They're kind of blurred because of your filter on there. Um, but but one thing that I want to point out to Miss Beth and Miss um, Susan is that one thing I think is notaries would say, oh, well, I can make this smaller and put it on a smaller stamp. And when it comes to title and escrow, no, you can't um, because it's got to be legible when it goes through that county recorder. So it needs to be, you know, full size so that it can be read and they're not going to blow it up for you. So any notary out there thinking, oh, I can make a smaller stamp to that or I can put this language on a smaller stamp. It won't work. Yeah, that that. Um, certificate language on recordable documents has to be um, 10 point PICA. Typically, there's only a couple of counties I know of that'll take an eight point um, font, but it's got to be 10 point. It's got to match what's in the document. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, um, Miss Susan, did you have any more questions before we? going for today all right and then lisa duffy i know you sent a message uh an, um, a message here um but uh are you gonna there you go you can ask your question for everybody welcome back thank you hi ronnie and everybody um i just wanted to uh ask about i know when you were talking about um collections and stuff so i used a while ago i used um the legal shield attorneys to write a letter for me. I had been trying to collect on when, when I was a mystery shopper, one of the um, companies didn't want to pay me. And 
Three months later, after trying to collect, I finally used Legal Shield, and they, the attorney, wrote a letter, and I got paid like within ten days. Mm-hmm. And so I was just wondering, you know, with all the rules that you were talking about, are we able to use Legal Shield for our our notary signing companies that don't pay? That is correct, and you know, guys, I'm I'm going to give you. Uh, a, a full disclosure. So you might have had a great experience with Legal Shield. Um, I personally had a terrible experience with Legal Shield. It took me about sixty days to get a letter written um, because I was told that there are only three attorneys that service this area in Arizona, and we take what we get. Legal Shield still tries to get me to sign up. Travis and I were like, "Whatever, we'll just retain a real attorney." Um, you might have had a great experience depending on where you are you're going to be grouped within the three attorneys that service that area and put into a queue it was not a great experience for me i did not appreciate how much i paid for it for the top tier level of service to get nothing out of it so but yes you can do that um you can definitely go that route i would say that if you are not getting the level of service that you believe you should get from legal shield to cancel that subscription so if you need to have it, absolutely sign up, get what you need. And if you have a great experience, keep that subscription. If you don't, get rid of it. Yeah, we have a large law firm here. Um, from what I understand, I don't know how true this is, but I've been told that they get $2 million a month or some ridiculous number um, because it's such a large law firm. But I haven't had any troubles I'm not going to kid you. I wrote the demand letter that I needed sent. Literally, I wrote the demand letter, sent it over and said, you know, because he said, you send me what you'd like me to say. This is from Arizona, by the way. So if you're in Arizona, consider not doing legal shield. Um, but I, I wrote the entire demand letter. I have the email chain and I called and they actually said um, the lady on the phone laughed at me. I said, listen, and I always start every conversation with this because I know I can sound a little hot headed. So I have to t- let people know that I'm not hot headed because unless you see my face, sometimes when I'm talking, you don't know how, what passion you're getting from this. I should have been an Italian because that, you know, I talk with my hands and I do all that stuff. But I called and I said, listen, I don't think I'm special, but we, you know, sent this in like 15 days ago. And then you said you'd get back to us. And now it's been another 15 days and I followed up. I was like, I don't think I'm special, but I'd like that letter. And she just laughed at me and said, <laughs> you should probably go to an attorney that cares because we're just part of Legal Shield and we're you are just a number in our queue. She goes, the I found your letter. And she goes, the reason you haven't been responded to is because you didn't include your uh, transaction number on this. And we don't answer anything re- if the transaction number is on there. I said, you could have at least responded with that. And they, and you know, after that experience of needing that letter, and this was, you know, a, a big deal. It wasn't for debt collection. It was actually for something that we needed to send a demand letter to the notary to release their journal um, to the title company uh, with a RON transaction um, because they had incorrectly done the RON. And it was, you know, we were trying to show the title company, hey, we have this under control, and they were just making it worse. We wound up getting a different attorney and and facilitating everything because we wanted to show that we were taking action on anything that could go bad. Again, my experience was not great, but yours was great, and I'm glad that you brought it up. I just want to let all notaries know that um, I ain't putting no affiliate links for Legal Shield on Notary Stars because I don't believe in it. It was there; it has been removed because I don't I've, I don't put things on that website that I don't trust myself. But Miss Lisa had a good experience with them, and yes, you can go through Legal Shield, and I'm glad that you brought it up. But I would say it is a 50-50 shot in the dark if you're going to get what you need out of that website. So you have a question in the chat. It wants to know if it's worth going through a small claims court. It, you know, um, it depends on how much your small claims court costs. You know, if 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 they have to pay, if, you know, if are you going to sue them for paying the cost of small claims court? And where are the companies located? Because they're not going to send a warrant to bring somebody from another state, you know, to come up here in your small claims court. Uh, that's going to get pretty costly over 50, 60, 70 dollars, you know, sometimes upward of 150. Now, if you have a ran up a big bill with a company, you know, a couple of grand, then that might be something that you want to do. 
but I don't think that any of you are going to want to spend the money that it costs to go to court and and do those things in small claims court or get anybody to actually bring them to your small claims court or in in, in most instances you would have to file a claim in their local city and state then you would have to travel to the small claims court in that city and state in order to 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 do it because you're going to have to file the claim where it actually happens if i'm I, and i'm not practicing law i'm not an attorney but i believe that's the the way of doing that so i just want to make sure people are no i do not think that i know everything i just think that's the process i've only had ever in 22 years to um no pay invoices and they were both attorneys so Legal Shield can't help me because it's an attorney sending an attorney a demand letter and they go, I'm not paying any attention to that. So <laughs> that was not helpful for me. Um, we do have a question uh, in the chat that I, I'd like to address. This is, and I hope I'm getting this name right. It's either Pilar or Pilar uh, Burton. Um, it says, I can't unmute right now. Um, but I have a question. They want to know if it's okay to put a thank you note in, in the return package to the title company that also lists the contact info. If you are working for a signing agency, absolutely not. Because a lot of signing agencies say that if you do that, you're in trouble. And I will tell you, title and escrow officers who love their signing agencies, I get calls all the time. Now, I don't blacklist notaries because I know my clients. My clients are very loyal. They love me. They love Unlimited Inc. So no harm, no foul. We just let the notary know if it becomes excessive, don't do that. However, um, you know, when you're putting in something that's not your file, that could be perceived as soliciting business. And I see it on signing order all the time where they put blacklist or they put something on your profile saying you solicited to their client and then no one wants to use you. So it's not worth the backlash of being misperceived you can put a letter in there and I would say, you know, it was, they're going to see your name on your notary stamp if they care that much. If you feel so inclined to put a thank you letter in, put a thank you letter in and actually don't put your, your, you know, name or anything. Just say, it was my pleasure servicing this file for you. Make it pretty paper, however you want to do it. If they want to know who you are, or if they want to tell that signing agency that they can they'd like to use you as a preferred notary, then they're gonna pick up the phone on their own accord to do that. That little piece of paper with pretty writing without your name on it is enough. And then it can never be come back to say that you were trying to steal that client or solicit to them or, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so that, you know, that's how to do it. To take it one more step further, when I did work for Amrock and I still do, but I only do RON transactions now, um, when I was out in the field for Amrock, I went as far as to have purple business cards in their color that I used a color picker to make with their logo. And on the back of it, I would tell the signers, if you refinance again with Amrock in the future, here's my vendor ID number. I would love for you to ask for me. And I had my number and my vendor ID number, and that was it. And I can't tell you how many repeat transactions I got out of that. And to this day, people still say, hey, Ronnie, we've got one for you they specifically requested you. I've signed in Phoenix, probably at least a hundred customers on the regular every time. And there is one man here who I've signed at least five times in 10 years. And he told me the last time, I will never do this with anybody but you. And we go to the same coffee shop every time. It's like a catch up party. And that is, that is good information for you guys to, to build that repeat clients. Every time you leave a refinance, guess what? They're probably gonna do it again in the future. Remind them, find a way to get them. And if you have to brand like for that company that you found them through, then brand it for that and say, you know, and we all know that Amrock never sells their loans. They try to keep them in house. Uh, they try to refinance them over and over again. Find a way to, you know, get them to review you. You know, that way you've got good clout and all those things for your futures, but then they know where they reviewed you. And it's usually on their Google or on their Yahoo or whatever they did that they wrote a review. That's another way to get them to remember you without putting something in a package that could get you in trouble. 
Not to change the subject, Ronnie, we're coming right up on the hour here, but Miss Amy Seitz is in the group now. She popped in just a couple of minutes ago. Did you want to ask that question for Daniel Brewer? Absolutely. Um, guys, I'm so glad. Thank you, Miss Amy, for coming in. Um, uh, are you ready for a question, Miss Amy? I'm making you a co-host now. Sure. I didn't hear it because I'm multitasking, texting, listening to Clubhouse and this, but on game. Okay. So we had a question from Dan Brewer about witnessing on a Ron transaction. And he said, and I believe it said from Oregon, uh, that it is required that the witness be in the room with the signer to actually witness them touch the keyboard and make that electronic signature. And we wanted your opinion on that because we have not done any of our transactions that way, actually. So I will say it varies by state law. And at this moment, I couldn't specifically say for Oregon. I will say there are legal limits over a Ron witness. So the one I typically go with because it's more universal is Florida's. Mm -hmm. And Florida says... If the person is overseas, then the person that's witnessing either must be physically present with the person signing if they are overseas too, or they have to be physically in the United States. Okay. Um, that's my typical rule of thumb is that if you're going to witness separate from the signer, then your feet has to be in the USA as a witness. Okay. So he was saying Oregon law says um, line of sight, and he wanted to know what that looks like in Oregon. What does line of sight mean? Well, let me let me pull up the law because I would have to reread it. And then you know, Miss Amy, we're gonna ask you to make this your next blog, right? <laughs> well, and it gets more difficult because like, um, so I, I did a Google for line of sight and I don't see that on the law. Um, but it even gets more difficult in states like um, Florida where they have a uh, vulnerable adult law, which is probate, not notary. But the notary still has to know this additional law, which is a quiz that they have to give the clients when they're doing an online notarization. And if the client answers in the negative connotation to any of the questions, the witnesses have to be physically in the room with them to do an online notarization. So, um, and it's stuff like, are you able to take care of your daily needs and things of that nature? So if they aren't able to get up and go to the bathroom by themselves, they have to have a special witness. Um, while you're looking that up, Amy, do you mind if I knock one of these hands out of the way? Uh, with go ahead, go ahead, because okay. this is going to take my, my concentration. Okay, uh, Miss Paula, while while we're waiting on Miss Amy to come back with that, can you uh, ask your question? Okay, uh, my question is is off the subject of what we've been talking about. That's but okay. It's about I get a lot of notifications for debt settlement. Mm -hmm. And, but in the past, they either cancel or when I get there, the client is leery about doing, about taking it. So I just wanted to know, I, I, I just don't know about these debt settlements. It's a really good question. So um, Unlimited Inc., we actually have a pretty large debt settlement company. Um, it was a decision that we made uh, pretty much at the downturn of the market to take this on. Uh, because we wanted to bring in the revenue, but we vetted that company like crazy. And they actually pay our notaries as long as they follow the directions. I, strangely, I had one this weekend where I had to tell the notary, you didn't call us from the table, so you don't get paid. That company actually has those uh, representatives on call 24-7 to answer any questions for the signers. We have seen situations where the signers don't want to proceed once they get there and they go over the paperwork. Um, but we still pay the notary uh, and that company is very happy to pay. Um, a lot of the times, you know, uh, different debt settlement companies are going to want to do things differently and they may not want to pay the notary. So you need to make sure that 
it aligns with what you're expecting and what you would want to happen when you do a debt settlement. Um, but, you know, a lot of debt settlements, people don't go all the way through with them. You know, I would say that out of, let's see, how many files did we do? I could calculate it. Last month with that company we did, oh, sorry, uh, let's see. And while he's we doing did that, 70, we did 70 files with them last month and I would say probably 15 of them did not proceed. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Are some companies, Paula, that I used to do debt settlements. Um, I started doing debt settlements and I did, I don't know, 20, 25 of them. And I found certain companies just didn't explain the process well enough to their signers. They depended on us reading that blasted 12 page script to them and having them sign off on that of being their whole explanation on how the process worked. And I felt like it put the notary in kind of a bad position. So I stopped working for that company altogether, but they're not all that way. So um, if you wanted to experiment with it and stick your toe in the water and go out there and try a few of them, um, some of them still won't close once you get to the table, but um, for the time that you spend there reading those uh, silly scripts and things to them, um, you should get paid something, regardless of whether it closes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, we have one last hand raised. I'm just going to check in with Amy Sites to see if she's ready. Uh, you can say yay or nay or shake your head if you want. You're ready? I'm ready. Okay. So, I looked at the Oregon law, and the only the only thing I see here is with the use of a credible witness, not just witnessing a document. So a credible witness is the human ID to verify a signer, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it just says the notary can use a credible witness if they are appearing before the notary as for the remotely located individual so in the presence of the notary or has has obtained satisfactory evidence of the individual online. So I don't see anything in here that says the witness has to be in the line of sight or even that the witness has to be anywhere near. It, it doesn't even say that the witness has to be in the USA, technically speaking, mm -hmm. but I kind of do general rule of thumb on that one. I wouldn't want to witness overseas myself. Awesome. Thank you for popping into our meeting. I know that you are juggling other meetings that you're very valuable at as well. So I'll let you get back to those. But everyone here, thanks you for coming in there. And we got that answer within, you know, our, our segment. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I would love for that to be one of your next blogs. I don't know if you guys have been reading Amy's blogs. I know the numbers are on there, um, are popping up. She's much appreciated in the industry. And uh, if you have it, you know, we have a whole Ron section, you know, by Bill and Amy she's been turning out some great knowledge for us thank you so much i appreciate it i love doing them too so i, I wrote it down so it's on my list <laughs> awesome. thank you so much uh -huh. and then our last question for today comes from miss melissa um which I, if it's not the question i think it's going to be then i'm going to ask another one um but uh miss melissa what can we have we help you with today well it's it's not really a question it's um Kind of two part, but I'll be quick. The okay. debt consolidation, I like. I liked doing that. And then just, I would just make sure. Um, do you understand? Before you even when you confirm the call, have they went over it with you? Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Okay. When I get there, we'll go over it again. Whatever. Okay, that was that part. But one time, what I did, and maybe this is one of your harassing things for the collection, because I've been lucky too, and I have had very many um, collections, but. Um, it was in Las Vegas. So I have family out there and I was going out there quite a bit. So then it'd been about three months after the, the time. And um, he kept telling me to contact this person, this person. So finally one day I just called, I said, well, look, I'm gonna be in town next week. Can I just come by your office and grab a check instead of you know you having to send it to me? And he said, oh, no, 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 we won't do that. And I got the check after that. <laughs> I, I, I don't, you know, 
I don't see a problem with it. Um, but I, I was being gonna, serious. I was honest going to go by if I could. If they have a storefront, which they may not, a lot of signing services don't. Obviously, you see, guys, I work from home. Um, Especially during COVID. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a problem with that if they have a physical storefront, which most signing agencies do not. Um, I will tell you, however, I had an attorney client that got up to a $6,000 problem, and I went and sat in their office for almost a full day and was not a problem but everybody who sat in that office i said what are you here for i'm here to collect payment that hasn't been paid for over 30 days and that could have got me in trouble um but he wound up paying half and then two weeks later paying another half he let me know he got into some financial trouble attorneys do too uh but i didn't know what i know now and i would never do that again i would just go through the obvious channels but you know just to do that now you said you had two parts or was that the two parts yeah, the debt consolidation and the collection. Okay, I want to use you as an example, and Miss Beth, if that's okay. Um, so recently, and I'd love to share what you learned about the the, the hybrid certificate in California. Um, you know, it's a it's not a laughing matter to me. I mean, it, you laugh, but Miss Beth let me know this morning that you know we posed the question, and then you got an answer, and then you found a different answer. And I want to use that as an example, and I think it's a great way to close today, actually, is because, and Miss Melissa, feel free to unmute, but Miss Beth, why don't you explain, let's not use names of where all, you know, unless it's Secretary of State, let's not use names of how we dug deeper, um, but I want Miss Beth to share this with everybody, and, and Miss Melissa, if that's okay, because I feel like it's important for every notary to know, so Miss Beth, can you leave that, in this, and Miss Melissa, you can say, yep, that's how it went, or, you know, that sort of thing. No, it was a process. I sometimes give exercises um, to people in class, and sometimes it's for the information, but always has an underlying um, benefit to them. I'm trying to um, get our notaries in our live classes to realize that um, resources are valuable but we always have to keep digging until we find the backup for those resources. So there was a question on a notarial procedure and I asked Melissa to find, you know, dig into it, do some research and find the answer. Um, one resource was maybe me. And while I couldn't quote statute, I had an opinion. And then she asked someone else, which is great. You got to, you know, do a tiebreaker, right? Asked another valuable resource who also didn't cite statute, but gave an opinion. Although she wasn't quite aware it was just an opinion. So I said, look further. Don't stop just because you're getting the answer you want. Keep digging. And she went to Secretary of State and Secretary of State said, oh no, okay. So now we've got two to one here. We need another one, go back to the Secretary of State, see if you get another different answer or if it's the same, ask them to show you the statute. Where's the proof? Where's the underlying um law that's going to preserve your commission, right? And if they can't give that to you, if they're determining or interpreting the way the law reads, then send me an email with that in there. The whole point of it was that we don't, sometimes we don't look deep enough, okay? If someone's giving you an answer, I could be wrong, or I could be very opinionated, or that other person, that other resource could be wrong, or could be giving you an opinion. Um, you need to find something that will preserve your commission. If it's to, if we're talking about notarial law, what do I need to preserve my commission? I can't go before the court and say, uh, it's because Ronnie Please, said I, I could. My microphone's off. Sorry. <laughs> we can't go to court and say, hey, they told me I could. I'm safe. I, I'm following what, what my resources told me was okay. 
they're going to say slap the cuffs on them. Yep. Ignorance is not an excuse. And we used an example and said, hey, if um, Joel told me um, to go into that 7-Eleven and steal a bag of chips, that it was perfectly fine. And I go in there and I steal a bag of chips and it was fine. Nothing happened. So I decided three days later, because Joel told me I could do this and walk in there and steal another bag of chips. Perfect. Now that's more days. I got more chips. I got, now I'm going to go back. And this time I'm going to get a bag of chips and a Coke because Joel said it was okay for me to do that. The third time I get arrested and I'm standing in front of the judge and he's going to say, what made you think you could break the law? It's not a law. Joel told me it was fine. Joel told me I could do that. <laughs> yeah, Joel. Yeah, some friend you are. Um, Joel told me I could do that. And he says, you're being ignorant. You need to read the law. You need to look at it. Throw her in jail. <laughs> so, so here's the point you could do something over and over and over again and get away with it that doesn't mean that it's legal to do so just because joel told you could told you that it was fine look for that piece of evidence that is going to your get out of jail card right where is that i want that email that says it's the secretary of, of state's interpretation of our law I want the law, the regulation that says that's okay. I want my get out of jail free card, not just someone's opinion. Yep. Guys, um, I, I just wanna say one last thing before we go today, and this won't take long at all. This month, Notre Stars is four years old. We are mm -hmm. celebrating our fourth anniversary. Um, this is, uh, this is, kind of huge because you know five business five years in business you're you, you know you're probably established so i'm looking for that fifth year and we will continue to build up notary stars with what you want i want to invite you to please go to our youtube channel okay make your way there make sure you're subscribed because that's where we post a lot of free information just like this session i do want to let you guys know that i'm putting into the chat right now all month long for any new member or any member that has been with us and then downgraded but wants to come back to see the new information we've been posting new videos inside the members only uh all week as well miss beth has been working her rear end off on getting videos updated and all those things uh there is a 50 percent off code for the notary star level or the notary star plus marketing level for the first month you can use it on an upgrade and you can use it on a um uh, you can use it on a return. You can use it on a new member. You can use it on an upgrade. Those dollars go to well work behind the scenes on training new, new notaries and making sure you have updated information and access to a well-kept library. Um, so I did put that in there. The code is all in caps, happy birthday notary stars. It'll be available for the entire month, 50% off your first month uh, at a notary star level or the notary star plus marketing. If you are trying to market your notary business, the marketing course Definitely. I promise you, I will not lead you down a dark road. There will be information and I am there to help you. Um, and uh, that code is also available for our sister website for the Ron Notaries, onlinenotariespublic.com. You can use that code, happy birthday notary stars on that website as well and get 50% off your listing on that Ron directory, uh, onlinenotariespublic.com as well. But the biggest thing is I want to say thank you for the last four years. The day I turned on Notary Stars, someone I didn't even know signed up with absolutely no marketing. It freaked me out, but it was an omen. And I called them and they have a free membership for life <laughs> because I was so happy that someone was looking for this. And I want to let you guys know that you guys have changed me over the last four years. You guys know I came into this industry on the training sector, guns blazing. We've got to know what we're doing. Stop listening to all this stuff. But you guys have changed me. I stopped, I started allowing comments on blog articles and YouTube. I have never allowed notary comments because I didn't want to get into drama. Our Facebook group has group got like almost 4,000 members. Notary Stars its site has almost 10,000, like just under a hair of 10,000. And, uh, you know, our 
Instagram's got like almost 7,500 and YouTube and all this stuff. And it's just so wonderful that I feel like we have such a peaceful environment. It's, it's a lot of, and, and everybody's really there to help everybody. And our meetings are always so really nice and healthy. And I feel like we cover a lot of ground. So I want to say thank you for helping us make Notary Stars. I think it's literally the best notary directory and training course on the internet, but I have to thank you because every time somebody has sent in an email, you have been so nice about it saying, hey, Ronnie, could we change this? Could we do it this way? Would be better. I had no idea that we were going to involve into what we were going to do today. I just wanted to make a directory with some training videos that was self-serving. And now I feel like I have a notary. I used to say notary family. Now I want to start calling it the notary army because, you know, we are like, we are probably like the notary national guard here. I mean, it's like crazy how many people have been under this roof and, you know, stayed a night, stayed a week, stayed a month, stayed six months, stayed four years. I feel like we have like, like we got real blood here. And I just want to say thank you because it's been an amazing journey. And because of you, I have a renewed faith in this entire industry. I mean, seriously, I was the, I would, there was no bigger alone wolf than me until I found you and you guys have given me a bigger heart, a great, a greater purpose, a bigger everything. And there is no, there's no way to say or show you how much that means to me. So all I can say is thank you. And I'm not going to cry, but I, I really mean those words. So thank you so much. If you don't mind turning on your cameras for us, if you are not naked or stuffing your face with a sandwich right now, I know it's late over there on the East Coast, but turn on those cameras so we can do our signature wave. Wave to yourself. If you watch the replay, wave to those members who couldn't be here tonight or watching the replay. Wave to those future notaries. And Miss Beth, how do we say it here at Notary Stars? Just remember, guys, we're all in the same storm. We might not be in the same boat. Some of us have yachts, some of us have canoes, and some of us are just dog pad. So just remember to be kind reach back and grab the hand of that notary behind you or next to you and bring them along the journey. Show them the way. Bye, guys. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Good night.